Om Jai Shri Managana. This is Bhardwaj Vaidhyaya Jalakar once again. Um, so, uh, my last two slokas that I had a question about was in the Bhagavad Gita when Krishna says, Yada Yada Hi Dharmasya Ghanir Bhavati Bharata, you know, that, that sloka where he says, Wherever Adharma is on the rise, Dharma is descending. I myself will descend uh, to punish the wicked and uh, save the good. Uh, general gist. How do we interpret that statement? How can we know is that is that one which is interpolated by uh, devotees of Vishnu or is that one that was said by Krishna? Uh, what is, I'm curious to know what is the opinion of, of Dhyanand Saraswati uh, Garu on, on this, on a shloka such as this. And then lastly, uh, but not least, uh, Bhagavad Gita 9.25. So Krishna is speaking basically, the context is Krishna speaking. Whoever you pray to, whatever you pray to, you'll go to that loka or you'll become of that substance. So, Sankaracharya in his Bhashyam, he's saying that uh, those who pray, for example, the Vinayakas, they go they go to that loka, those who pray the Pitru Devatas, they, 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 their, their level of spiritual development stops there. But those who pray me, those who are my devotees, who, and he specifically uses the word Vaishnava, he doesn't say those who understand Vishnu, those who are the, who are, you know, part of the Vishnu Tattvam, he doesn't say anything, he uses a specifically word, he says Vaishnava, those who are Vaishnavas, um, attain the highest state of liberation, of moksha, while worshippers of uh, other fruitive results, those people who, who worship, uh, you know, Devatas or worship God for money or worship for wealth or worship the Pitru Deva, the ancestors, they kind of, they stop at that level only. So, why does he use the word Vaishnava specifically? And this is across the board, this cannot have been an interpolation because across the board of Sankaracharya's Bhashyas, um, of what we have today, in each and every one of those copies, that's a solid statement that's there, that's, he uses the word Vaishnava to describe uh, who attains the highest form of liberation. Um, could you please uh, give your, kind of your understanding, your opinion on this statement? Um, So for your question that um, uh, Krishna says that I will take uh, whenever Adharma is there uh, to remove the Adharma I come down to earth and whenever uh, you know uh, such things happen I take Avataram and other things. So what is uh, Maharshi Dhanan Saraswati's opinion? That's what is the question. See Maharshi Dhanan Saraswati he clearly mentioned that Krishna is a yogi. He, his understanding is also that. And a yogi can know his past births and future births. He can know it. So therefore, in in order to say that a yogi can, uh, he can determine that whenever there's such thing, I can take birth. I will take birth and I'll remove the adharma. So that is what I like it. He can do that. Yes. He need not to go for moksha. Or if he goes to moksha, also he can come back for doing that. Yes, he can do that. So these are the possibilities of a yogi. Therefore, we can say that Krishna must have told that sentence that way. If at all you believe that, he said it that way. Okay. And second thing you said, uh, something else that, uh, uh, you know, that whoever uh, t prays to Pitru Devatas, they will go to Pitru Lokas and uh, who prays to Vinayaka, they will go to that Loka and who, who are Vaishnavites, they will come to me. That's what Krishna told. And why did he mention Vaishnavites? As I said to you, this is what is your version of telling. That's what is the version of uh, everybody telling that one uh, who believe in Bhagavad Gita is written by told by uh, Sri Krishna those, those many slokas. No, but the, the Bhagavad Gita was only 11 slokas. You can refer to Telugu Mahabharatam. 11 slokas or 12 slokas, I remember. So rest everything is, uh, you know, cooked up and kept. But so many things are very goodly, very nicely kept. Yes, these are correct. They are taken from Upanishads and kept there. So that, you know, all Upanishads put together, something we will make it. So they made a Grandam. And they attached it to Sri Krishna. And Sri Krishna was attached to God. And everything has happened. So please understand, until you say that it is given by God, or it is given by Vyasa, it is given by Shankaracharya, nobody is going to accept it. Suppose, for example, I will tell you. I will tell that Einstein liked Sri Krishna a lot. Do you know that? Then immediately your mind starts, Einstein thought, oh God, where did he say? Then you will, first of all, if you are if you're a fanatic of Krishna, then immediately you will start, ah, Einstein told you, start telling others. 
Einstein told, Einstein told, Einstein told. And it becomes, uh, you know, a propaganda. And, you know, people start believing it. Oh, God, Einstein told, Einstein told. So, because Einstein is great. Tomorrow, someone will tell, Bill Gates loved to pray at uh, um, some temple in Kashi. Whenever he visits, he prayed there. That's it. Everybody starts going to the temple. So, these are the stories we have to understand to, to make a, a particular religion strong or make people to get attracted to that. That's what they do. So, you got to get this off your mind. This off your mind. Gita is a, a few slokas which Krishna told and that's the end of the story. And the rest of the things, so many good things are kept in that. So, let's read that. No problem. But taking avatara and telling avatara, these are made up, cooked up in order to make sure that religion exists. Shankaracharya told, no, Shankaracharya will never tell like that. It's trash. Somebody included in that and then put Shankaracharya's name. That's it. You got to strongly believe this one, that it is possible to cook up in those olden days. I'm talking about olden days when there was no radio, there was no TV, when there's no computer, when there's, you know, everything is written in palm leaves. And, you know, if Mahabharata is written by Vyasa, to come to Andhra where they have to take a Sanskrit manuscript and, uh, you know, translate it into Telugu, from where did they get? How many copies did Vyasa make? Did he have a Xerox machine to make it? No. He wrote it and people learned it from Guru to Sishya, Guru to Sishya. And whoever wanted to incorporate according to their king, they incorporated so many things. And that's how they entered into manuscript. That's why there's a differentiation between at some location Mahabharata and some other location Mahabharata. That's the problem. So, please understand, Bharadwaj, it's not possible that uh, things uh, happened that way that uh, Shankaracharya wrote or something like that. No. Shankaracharya is a Vedic scholar. He would never do such thing. It is written by those followers who wants to cook up the stories of avatars. It was necessary for them. Otherwise, there's no, there's no wisdom in that. Hmm. So, Vedas, they could not read. They, are, they become lazy. They have become lethargic. They don't want to read with, ah, oh, we'll read that difficult. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, read. Same thing, mantra, how to repeat this side, that side, and then no, and then go into grammatical, uh, you know, understanding and making it in a big thing and then going to, you know, uh, 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 what is that called as, uh, <clears throat> niruktam and uh, chandasu and then uh, saying that, okay, according to this, according to this, according to this, therefore, this is the meaning. Who wanted it? When they are getting a stomach full food by, from the farmers and other people, you know, they are just uh, making money. Why do I require? Why would I do that? I become lazy. So people have become lazy and they misguided. For sure. That's the reason we got foreign invasion into India. If all our Vedic scholars, they don't do this type of nonsense, India could have not been under the uh, arms of the other countries. We could have been the rulers there. So therefore, see, try to understand this point very clearly that cooked up stories, we got to separate them. We have to be. That's why read Vedam. It, even it's difficult. Let it take 20 years. But you know the truth. Yes. Let it take 40 years. What's wrong in the What else is in my life? Anyhow, you're doing medicine, you said, you know, you're a um, you know, medical student and this and that and so why do you worry all these things? You just read Vedam whenever you find time. You start learning Sanskrit, start learning, you know, uh, Chandas, then you learn Vyakaranam and then, uh, uh, you know, Niruktam and everything and then you are good. It will take some time. Let it take. What's wrong in that? I want to know the truth. Truth is in Vedam, not in anything else. So, they know very well that people like you, only one or two may learn Vedas. Rest of the women, they're, they're very lazy fellows. They will not learn. And will not teach. That's the end of the story. So that's the thing happened. And it's very easy. See, I make an idol and then say that this fellow is going to do miracles to you. That's fantastic for you. What else you want? So that is how religions develop. But Vedam is beyond all these things. So I, I hope you are.